Well, happy birthday, Elon. And what do you get for the man who has everything? Well, his team delivered a new parlor trick for the app, and you can now set up your navigation from the app. You don't have to wait till you get in the car. That's really a good idea, by the way. Um, so many times I'll figure out my where I'm going uh, before I get in the car, and then I have to redo it when I get in the car. So that's I like it. Good idea. Anyway, Tesla topping $200, at least for now, actually doing it quite nicely, uh, significantly over 200, 202 last time I looked. Bradford Ferguson says last night that he thinks the market is assuming a bottom for unit sales and earnings and a return to growth over the next 12 months. That's why he thinks it's now moving upward, even though we're looking at bad numbers on Tuesday. This narrative is being helped along by a very strong analyst notes that have the stock returning to, if depending on who you like, $265, $310, or even $350, based on a combination of all factors, but primarily AI, meaning, of course, Optimus and CyberCab. Well, my thesis, the low car sales right now are due to the Osborne effect of Cybertruck and Highland, that doesn't alter the reality for U.S. competition. The rest of the car companies right now are still going to have to be able to overcome the reality of a horrible charging network. So Tesla opening up their network work should help over time. But I now believe this is another one of those, you know, uh, brain explosions uh, this morning. I believe that their pullback earlier this year was due to recognition that it was going to take a year before the consumer out there would realize, would, would get over their range anxiety caused by a horrible set of charging stations available to them for all those other brands. So what do you think about that idea? That's a brand new idea. Again, have you heard anybody say that? That the reason for the pullback has nothing to do with people being down on EVs or not wanting an EV or anything else. What it has to do with is the, 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 the they had the data. Ford and General Motors and go down the line, Mercedes, they all had the data. In the United States, only Tesla was going to be able to keep moving forward because of this range anxiety problem. And until it's solved, why continue to invest heavily? So, why am I continuing to beat this drum? Well, you see, I'm excited to see the transition to sustainable energy. This is what's made me excited in the beginning. I am, as you know, I don't have to repeat it over and over again. I'm not a, an ex, a, a uh, global warming existential, you know, problem that we're all going to be, you know, living on the tops of mountains to avoid the sea. I don't believe any of that stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, but I believe electrification is smart. I believe it'll clean the air. I believe that it's just, uh, you know, better for everybody that we use the cheapest power. That's always going to be the better part of uh, intelligence. So I'm a bit shocked to see that all the other analysts and experts haven't figured out the reason for the interruption in the S curve. The reasons for the interruption of the S-curve, as I just mentioned, would be range anxiety for the rest of the car makers and would be the Osborne effect on Model uh, S and I mean primarily on Model Y, although it's affecting S and X as well, and maybe even Model 3, as we pointed out from the poll yesterday. Anyway, you can't address and fix an issue unless you know what's causing it. I I really feel like I need to, I'm one little pipsqueak. I'm just one little YouTuber out there. It's like my voice is bigger than it was 18 months ago. Uh, you know, but maybe, maybe 10,000 people will see this video. Maybe between all the videos I've done on the subject over the last few days, maybe 12,000, 14,000. What needs to happen is it needs to get out to more of the larger voices, the people that can reach 100,000 or a million. Now, again, why does it matter? Because you can't fix a problem until you identify it. And if the world doesn't get what's happening to that S-curve, then they're not going to be able to respond to it in a way that makes sense. All right. Well, you know, speaking of the things I've been hammering on, Pete Buttigieg, or however you pronounce his name, was trying to make a point to Republicans in Congress yesterday. You see these congressional folks 
these Republicans, they're idiots on the subject of electrification, on the on the subject of electric cars and whatnot. And the congressman who was interviewing Pete or was trying to get Pete to give them some information, he couldn't have been further in the dark about what's happening with electric cars. So Pete was trying to help him understand. And, and this congressman kept on saying, well, you know, out of all the car, electric cars that are being sold in the United States right now, are these, you know, how many of those are, are being purchased by government? And Pete said, hardly any. And the guy said, he asked him again, what do, you, uh, uh, what do you mean? Well, you know, I know I'm, what I'm trying to ask you is out of all these electric cars that are being sold right now, how many are being bought by real people, by consumers? And how many of those, but there must be tons of them being bought by governments. And Pete says, no. And I say to Pete, do your job. <laughs> Why if the governments, the states, the blue states in particular, I'm sorry, yeah, the blue states, the blue cities, and the federal government, that's blue, 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 all the way across. Why, if these people believe there's an existential threat that we're all going to be cooking in our little stews here uh, in, uh, in the cities, uh, that the oceans are rising, the tornadoes and hurricanes are killing, yeah, all of which probably not true. But if you believe it, and you think it's existential, then why are you not buying them for governments? That's my question, Pete Buttigieg. Well, SpaceX had a bunch of news right now. They are now the most valuable private company in history with a $210 billion valuation. <laughs> How do you like them apples? They also want a major, huge contract. They're going to be uh, disassembling and returning the space station into Earth's atmosphere. I didn't read into the nitty gritty, but I think most of it will be a case of bringing it in to the atmosphere so it can burn up on reentry. Maybe some of it will be specifically designed to be, you know, end up in the sea. Uh, maybe they're going to bring some of it all the way back to Earth. I don't know the details, but I just know they won the contract. Uh, nobody else is in space, really. At this point, it is all SpaceX. This is Randy Kirk. Hit like, subscribe, notify, all that stuff. Later this morning, we will finally get to Scott Walter. Brian White's other video will wait until tomorrow. Uh, we will have uh, Larry uh, Gold, Goldberg will be on this morning with me. Uh, Larry was uh, very, very uh, good Good, good comments this morning on X. Go, You go, Larry. Hey, um, markets, uh, join Patreon. Markets are moving up confidently this morning. Um, they had, uh, I guess they're responding in a positive way to the fact that uh, that uh, Biden did a terrible, terrible job on the debates last night and that uh, Trump won the debates. So there's, you know, a change of government is usually good for the stock market. And so whatever your feelings are politically, that's just a reality, and that's usually good for the stock market. It's also good for the economy the first year of the new president, of the new administration. It doesn't really matter whether it's Republican or Democrat or vice versa. Um, and uh, the other good news this morning was that the PCE was boring, came in. Well, boring. I mean, it's good news. It was a zero, zero month. Well, 0.1 on the core, zero on the headline. Uh, but basically, we'll talk about that in a couple of seconds. But um, one data point, as the Fed has said, are we going to have another one next month? That will be the telling story. Well, what did I learn from the debate last night? Well, I my feeling after thinking about it and waking up this morning, this debate format is in this world today, this is no longer the right debate format. And I'm going to suggest that going forward, they don't use this debate format anymore. The all in podcast, and I think it's the Paul brothers. Anyway, they've been you know, we've had these long for, form debates uh, or long form interviews, rather. Uh, we've had them uh, on YouTube. We've had them on podca uh, podcasts. We've had them on uh, X. These long form interviews are far more informative. This is the way to go forward. You want to use these same debate questioners? I don't think so. They're not trained for that long format deal. That's what happened to Lemon when he tried to do the uh, debate with uh, with Elon Musk. No, we need the ones who are expert at it. Let, maybe Lex Friedman should do both. Maybe he should have the long form for both and make that be the big deal 
I think we learn so much more. If you want, if you haven't watched the debate, not debate, the interview uh, that the All In podcast guys did with uh, with uh, Trump, then you have Then you cannot make a, a proper decision about whether Trump is uh, a, a good candidate or not. You need to watch that and see him in the real world and see how he responds to tough questions, much better, much better questions than you saw last night. Oh my gosh, like a hundred times better. All right, Morningstar is reporting this month, this morning that the PCE price index held steady in May, a zero increase on the headline number. And that was exactly what FactSet was expecting. Uh, that meant that uh, this is, you know, last month there was a 0.3% increase. So going from 0.3 to zero, you cannot expect and think that next month is going to also be zero. It's probably going to be somewhere in between. Maybe it'll be back to 0.3. Maybe it'll be negative, but it's not going to be the same when you've got a, that much of a difference month to month. Core PCE rose 0.1% in May. That was also right in line with forecasts after a similar 0.3% increase in April. The PCE price index year over year rose 2.6. Um, and uh, that was down from 2.7, and core was exactly the same. I'm sorry, uh, was uh, 2.6 down from 2.8. So everything there is directionally correct. The thing that was uh, uh, troubling to me this morning is that none of the people that I was looking to for reporting gave any of the details. I want the details. If I find interesting details, uh, Larry and I'll undoubtedly go over those tonight. All right. Um, this from CNBC, consumer spending, which is a significant driver of economic activity, increased 0.2% for the month, accelerating from the 0.1% from the month before, excluding inflation, real spending grew at 0.3. Okay, so 0.3% increase in overalls in, in non-inflation adjusted, but only 0.2% after you take out inflation. A 0.5% increase in personal income, as well as disposable income, including taxes, 0.5% up on both of those. That's a 6% uh, you know, year over year increase. Uh, people are spending, I'm sorry, uh, getting a lot more income right now and not spending as much, but their savings only ticked up slightly to 3.9. That's the highest level since January, but not historically very high. All right, this from Market Watch this morning, just breaking now. The Chicago Business Barometer, also known as the Chicago PMI, inched down to 44 in October from 44.1. Economists had expected a 45.3% reading. The index has been in contractionary territory since August of 2022. Economists said the auto strike might have held the index down. What? I'm beginning to wonder that I got the wrong report here. I will find out and let you know in the information above. This was uh, the Chicago index. I wonder if they were showing the uh, a year ago. Hmm, I better find out. I'm very sorry about that. I got it right off the top of, <laughs> of the information that was being available on their website. Anyway, University of Michigan website. This is actually the correct news. I'm very sorry. I'll let you know again. At, uh, look at the very top, the very top comment. I'll pin it. University of Michigan website. Consumer sentiment held steady in June. This month's reading was a scant and statistic, statistically insignificant 0.9 index points below May and well within the margin of error. Univers University of Michigan keeps on... Um, uh, this is the second time in a row I've seen this where University of Michigan is um, editorializing within their commentary. Uh, let us decide whether that is this, whether that's scant. I don't want to know from you whether it's scant. If you want to say statistic, statistically insignificant, fine. But I'm not sure that going down 0.9 percent, almost a full index point below May, uh, and you know, is is insignificant. While consumers exhibited confidence that inflation will continue to moderate, many expressed concerns about the effect of high prices and weakening incomes on their personal finances. These, this is the key. These trends offset the improvements in the short and long-run outlook for business conditions, stemming in part from expectations for softening interest rates, which have not happened. Still, sentiment is currently about 36% above the trough seen a year ago. Okay, so 36% above last middle of last year when things were really bad. 
Year ahead inflation expectation fell from 3.3 to 3.0 this month. In comparison, these expected expectations were ranging around 2.3 to 3% in the two years prior to the pandemic. Long range inflation expectations came in at 3.0 for the third consecutive month and have remained remarkably stable over three years. So, all right. What are the markets making of all of this information? Let's go ahead and take a look. We've got Tesla still over 200, although backing off of its high of the morning, it is at 200.92, up $3.50. We've got the Dow up 207, which is about the high for the day. Also, NASDAQ now flattening out, up 147, though. Very strong now um, compared to where it was earlier. S&P up 36 the MAG-7, which had all been down earlier, now is mixed. Well, pretty much pretty much all up, except for Google, slightly down. Uh, NVIDIA up three, uh, which is a strong uh, thing. Um, Apple just barely up. Okay. And we got the Kathy Woods, however, uh, just really, uh, I should really, I, I should, I'll, maybe I'll try to dig into this a little deeper and take a look at some of these charts later. Maybe that's another thing for Larry and I to take a look at. Larry follows this very, very carefully. Um, and I'd be interested to see what is really going on with Kathy Woods. Um, all right, let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, oh, I'm very sorry. For those of you who like to hear the percentages, we have got the Dow up 0.54. We have got the um, uh, NASDAQ up 0.81, and we got the S&P up 0.67, with Tesla up 1.65%, 1 .5, um, and still inching down uh, uh, $200.67 right now. Okay, now let's go look at the bonds. We have got the 10-year is up four-tenths of one basis point, hardly any movement this morning. Interesting with the PCE coming in as expected. You might have expected more of a move there. 4.29, so well over my 4.25 kind of break point. Um, you've got the two-year down uh, 3.1. So that means that the 4.3, that means that the inversion is that is a big closing of the inversion right there. 3.3 down. The 10-year is now unchanged at 4288. But the two-year is down 3.3. That closes the inversion a ton to four, almost exactly four, very close to 40 basis points, down from 50 just a few days ago. The two-month is up one basis point this morning at 538. That would continue to be well above, like 100, almost 110 uh, basis points there. All right. Oil um, right now is at 81, down 72 cents. That's Texas Intermediate. Uh, Brent has not fallen as far, only down 15 cents at 86.24. That is now over a $5 difference. Oil heads to third weekly gain as fears of Israeli Hezbollah war uh, uh, increase. So uh, that's what we typically see. We are now over $5. So the market is really thinking maybe Israel and Hezbollah are going to go into a hot war. Uh, natural gas uh, down 1.12% at 2.655. You've got gold up $5.70 at 23.42, right in the middle of their range. Silver up 1.55 1 this morning at 29.71, looking like it's heading back over 30. Copper uh, up 1.28% at $4.38. Uh, Bitcoin down 397 at 61. Will it close under 60? Close. Will it get under 60,000 again? Kind of looks like it's headed that way. We've got the euro is um, biggest monthly fall since January. Uh, yen down. Um, so the dollar strong this morning on the PCE news. Um, and then, uh, yeah, okay. That is pretty much all we have, except for going back and seeing if Tesla is moving one way or the other. Well, Tesla is moving not any way at this point. It's now flat at 259 cents. All right, so what do we got? We have got yesterday, we had a video with, um, uh, yeah, I did a video yesterday, very 
major, major video yesterday that you need to go back and take a look at on this whole business of the Osborning effect. Uh, that I will put up right here. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, I got a lot, a lot of views. Um, I think it's one of the better videos I've ever done. One of the most important videos I've ever done. Because again, if we don't know what the problem is, we don't know what the solution is. If Elon is believing the press and believing that the uh, that Tesla sales are down because of him or because of people getting sour on EVs or because of uh, the economy or because of interest rates, I've got, I've got news for him. No, it's Osborne. And there's something you can do about that right now, Elon. You can get on that model uh, refresh on the Model Y. I think it will show you big gains by the end of the year. Don't know how fast you can do it, but I think it would be a big deal. By the way, I do believe that Tesla will have increasing car sales the rest of the year, heading towards that 2 million. We talked about that a lot the other day because of a lot of things that they could still, that are still going to happen this year, including FSD complete and then hopefully FSD 4.0. Um, I'm sorry, you know, level four, level five uh, happening as well. All right. And uh, so hit like, subscribe, notify, all that kind of stuff. Later on this morning, you will have uh, Scott Walter and then Larry Goldberg. You don't want to miss what Larry has to say tonight. I'm sure I'll have a bunch of very interesting things to talk about. It has been great talking to you this morning.